Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It's Tractor Man 44 here. Hey, uh, you know, I'm going to show y'all something probably shouldn't show you simply because, you know, I don't do how-to videos. And by no stretch of the imagination is this to be considered a how-to video. My brother's putting an engine together. It's a it's a 8N Ford tractor engine. He's got all new, you know, new valve train and everything, you know, new new liners and the whole bit. Well, last week, you know, I stopped by and we went ahead and we uh, serviced the valve seats, touched them up with the stone. Uh, so we essentially ground them, but we didn't cut them with seat cutters. We just used honing tools and the proper tools to go ahead and hone them to the uh, the correct angles that the uh, intake and exhaust valve needs to be. Well, he's putting everything together this week, and uh, lo and behold, one of the valves is just entirely too long. Now, you know, you kind of get this. Sometimes uh, valves, the tail ends of them have to be adjusted just a little bit. Sometimes if you grind older valves, you take a little bit a little bit too much off of and make the top of the valve a little bit too thin. Well, what happens, that sets down into your seat just a little too far, makes your stem longer. So you have to dress the stem a proper amount in order to compensate for that. This is not the case. This is a brand spanking new valve that just happens to be too long. The valve stem actually goes down inside the block and rests on top of what's called an, uh, an adjustable lifter. And then that lifter then rides on the lobes of the camshaft as the camshaft goes around and around two times for every one revolution of the crankshaft. That's responsible for opening and closing the valves. Okay, so if you've got one that come from the factory whose stem is a little bit too long and there's not enough adjustment on the adjustable lifters, you know, to compensate for it, you have to touch up that tail end of that, um, that valve. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you all something I shouldn't show you. Because like I say, you should always take your engines uh, and things to a machine shop. Uh, I am by no means am I uh, a mechanic and I turn wrenches, but half time I turn them the wrong way. But at any rate, we have a tendency to put things together, you know, ourselves. And with this equipment that I've got here, I've already done, I don't even know how many Ford 460, Chevy 350 engines. I've done a number of four-cylinder Continentals for the old tractors. Uh, three-cylinder Perkins, three-cylinder Ford. I've done all kinds of, of head work on all those machines. I don't do any boring of the cylinders. I don't have that capacity. But when it comes to head work, uh, I pretty much got that under control. Again, not in the way in which professional mechanics would like to see, but good enough for somebody like myself or my much older brother when we're playing with these old or these old machines out here in the woods and not really out there having to make a living with them farming all day long. Uh, some of the stuff I probably do probably wouldn't hold up. But you know what? We've had a pretty good string of luck so far. Today, hopefully, is going to be no exception, but we have one valve that we're going to touch the tailpiece up. And what you're looking at here is the an old valve grinding machine. Uh, obviously, it needs a little bit of work. My retirement light has uh, kind of come a little disconnected. As long as nothing touches that wire, it should be okay. I'm just going to set this off to the side so I can let you see. But here's the portion over here where you actually grind the surface of the valves and put the, the multi-angle uh, surface on the seating portion of the valve themselves and then this index is back and forth this way and goes back and forth this way in order to compensate for what it is that you need to do and then of course there's machining adjustments in thousands in thousands of an inch you know on that portion of it and over here on this end this is the end where we do the uh the tail ends or the the stems of the valves themselves and we'll set our valves valve right here our brand new valve right here if you notice we've got an angled seat that that's set up against so you rest that down into there against that seat and just gently put a little bit of pressure on this. Now we want to go ahead and securely attach, securely hold the, the valve itself into place. And so what I'll do is just put this nice, neat little machined piece of aluminum across the head of that valve. And that'll kind of hold it into place. There's a thumb screw underneath here that tightens this down because you have to slide it back and forth to get it to where it needs to be in position. So now secure here, secure it here, and secure it here. Now what this is, this is a Thor, a Thor valve grinding machine. There are several different manufacturers of them. This is a really a cool water-cooled machine. This whole base is hollow, and there's a perforated shelf in here that this, this whole setup sets inside because there's a pump that pumps the coolant up through and right down here across through this tube, across that wheel, as well as up here whenever you're grinding the the uh, sealing surface of the valves, it'll pump it right up into there as well. I think I've got that disconnected right now because I think I, I may have drained the uh, the coolant out of there the last time I used this, but I, I don't know. But the, what little bit I'm going to grind right here, I don't even have to worry about uh, any coolant at all anyway. Okay, now that we've got everything set in here and right here exactly where we want to start, we're right at zero where we want to start. Right here, if you take a look, well, you can't see, but there's an, an indicator on the 
fixed portion of this scale here. And then over here is the, the rotating dial in marked in thousandths of an inch that you turn clockwise to move this way, counterclockwise to move that way. So what I'll do is I will rotate it as we start the thing up and touch the end of it. I'll just move this maybe a half a thousandth or a thousandth at a time until we get the desired amount that we want off. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna plug it in, make sure none of this sharts out. So we're going to go ahead and start up. Turn it in one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. Five thousand seven inches. Take a look over here. You can see if we were uh, going to be grinding this valve, it'd be ready to be pulling forward into that wheel over there. I'm going to take a, a couple of more thousands off real quick. We can loosen this guy right here, spin him around, drop this off of here, and then the valve comes right straight out. So there we have a perfectly machined end, and we are literally 16 thousandths shorter than it was when we started. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and deburr this outside edge. Be right back. The end result, we're at 4.771, and here was the starting point at 4.7875. So now I'm going to take a few more thousandths off and I thought I'd move the camera to this side so that you could see a little better. This is the, the scale marked in one thousandths of an inch that I've been turning. It's been, I didn't notice it, but it was off camera. I was kind of being shielded from view. I'm going to go ahead and grind a few more thousandths off of it and you'll be able to see just a little bit better. So right now we're still starting out at zero because I put this back in, but I set it at the 16 thousandths where I left at. So 16 thousandths is now our zero. So just pass again on the 16. Now we'll turn this. Seven thousandths. Now what you can do, you can turn in, go this way, turn in again, and grind one coming back out too. That should be a total of 25 thousandths. If you look in here close at the adjustment knob, you can see my my 25 thousandths mark is aligned with the uh, with the zero. So if I pull this all the way back, you can see where we started at. If I pull this all the way back to zero, right there, that was the actual starting point. So now on things that are real critical, I'll go ahead and use the micrometers, you know. But on something like this, it's not really that critical because like I said, you got to remember, you got a tremendous amount of adjustment on that adjustable lifter. Uh, we took 20 thousandths. That doesn't sound like a lot, or it might sound like, like a lot to you, but it really isn't that much. 25 thousandths is only like the point setting on some of these old engines, you know? So it's not a tremendous amount, but it's just enough to where it's going to allow us to get that valve uh, spring and keeper assembly into the block and get it down enough to get the retainer clip in place as this thing sets on top of the lifter at one of the very lowest adjustable settings that we can get it set at to begin then the, the setting for the, uh, the, the cold settings prior to starting the engine. This here's an exhaust valve. I think the exhaust valves are supposed to be 17 thousandths cold. Uh, intake valves, I think, were 12 thousandths cold. I'm not sure. I have to, have to think about that for a minute. And it's about time to take this back over to my much older brother's house. All us old guys mess with old tractors, you know. We're hard-headed. I mean, you know, if we can do it ourselves or if we think we can do it ourselves, 
by golly, we're going to get in there and try to do it, which is why I put together the different tools and stuff that I've got over the, over the years. You know, the welders, the sheet metal equipment, the mechanical, the machine equipment, things like that. I've always been interested in, in so many things, and whenever I come across an opportunity to get them cheap, I'd go ahead and get it. Like, for instance, this valve grinding machine here. That come to me on a job site one time, about 100, 180 miles away from home, doing a job at a hospital. And I was talking to a guy at break time, and he is, hey, you know anybody wanting a valve grinding machine? His neighbor was selling. I said, heck yeah, man. So, hey, went over there and, you know, we made a deal and I come home with it, you know, so I'm just happy as could be. I've used this thing on countless engines. Uh, do I know what I'm doing? Not really. In theory, I can kind of halfway get there, but in actuality, I don't know that I'm doing a good job or not, but I've not had to take one of them apart yet, you know, so that's a good thing. I guess the point of the story is some of us old guys are just hard headed. And if you notice, I changed hats. I had to take the missus to town real quick. And we got pretty good little snow coming down. It's freezing rain and, and sleep pellets. And uh, had to run her into town, you know. At any rate, I hope you all enjoyed what not to do. Unless you come across one of these things, got an engine you want to play with and everything, and don't care if you do a little damage to it, go ahead and take it and have them professionally done. Especially if you're going to work the tractor. These old things that we mess with, we work them, but we more play with them than we work. At any rate, I hope you all enjoyed that. I guess I better troll the uh, the trolls on this particular one because I do not profess to know what it is that, uh, that we're doing here, but we can make it work. And you know what? This is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here, guys.